Uh, today we are starting a lecture on the rest membrane potentials and the action potentials, right? Uh, someone has answered that resting membrane potential is present in all the cells, right? And action potential is present in all the cells or some of the cells? Yes, maybe Mustafa can tell us. Now what about action potentials? Okay, anyone from this area? Someone has said that resting membrane potential is present in almost all cells and this statement is true. Almost all cells. Of course, we will go into detail that what is resting membrane potential and how it is produced. Then there is, there is another term, action potential, right? Uh, which cells in the body can have action potential? Yes, please. Because these two things we have to have very clear concept. Number one, resting membrane potential and number two is action potential, right? Yes. Which cells in the body can have action potential? Dr. Isma is going to answer, so everyone should listen respectfully. Yes, please. All the cells? All, uh, we should not go on here. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Isma is saying that action potential is present in all the cells. Uh, it is absolutely wrong. Uh, right? Uh, put a big cross on this answer. Is it in the skeletal and cardiac cells? Yeah, Mustafa is eventually right. Action potential is present in neurons and muscles. Right? Action potential is produced in the neurons and muscle cells. This may be smooth muscle or it may be cardiac muscle or it may be skeletal muscle. There is a hell of a difference in resting membrane potential and action potential. Resting membrane potential is a transmembrane potential present in almost every cell when it is not excited. Almost every cell in our body has resting membrane potential. I will explain what it is and how it is produced. But you have to have a very clear concept that action potential is fluctuating electrochemical changes across the cell membranes which are produced only in neuromuscular system cell. Cells in the neuronal system, neuronal cells and muscular cells, they develop electrochemical fluctuations across the membrane which propagate. These are the potential differences across the membrane which are in action. This is what you have to remember. <coughs> this is the difference in resting membrane potential and action potential. Resting membrane potential is a potential difference across the membrane which is resting, not fluctuating. When cells are not electrically excited, they still have some transmembrane potential difference and that is resting membrane potential. But new neurons and muscle cells have a very unique capacity. We will talk about that later, why they have that unique capacity. The unique capacity is that if neurons or muscle cells are elect, uh, stimulated appropriately, they develop transmembrane potentials which are propagating on the membrane surface. And if there are potentials which are moving on the membrane surface, they are called action potential right now today's lecture will be about resting membrane potential and the next session we'll discuss in detail about action. action potential right so let's talk about from where the resting membrane potential comes in every cell let's start with a very very simple example right we have a hypothetical cell here let's suppose we have a hypothetical cell here right and of course, like it's a nucleated cell, so it must have a nucleus. And you must be knowing in the nucleus there are chromosomes and in the chromosome there is genetic <laughs> material. Let's suppose this is representing genetic material. We'll start very simple, so don't be stressed out, just relax mentally, right? So what we are talking about, very simple thing. We have a hypothetical cell with a nucleus with genetic material and we'll see how that membrane develops certain electrical potentials. Look, first of all, you know life started in ocean, isn't it? According to the evolution theory, life started from where? From water, isn't it? And they say that basically life, the first cell or the real life started from the oceans. Sea, sea water is salty. Sea water is salty. salty. You, you must be knowing, isn't it? Right. 
actually our cells when in the evolution when the life started as a right and when it reached to the level of unicellular organism it was in salty water right because our mechanisms are evolved in the base of salt salty water around so every cell in human body is keeping a salty water outside it and living its own private unique type of sea not caribbean sea unique type of sea every cell your every cell has salty water around it that water is called extracellular water extracellular fluid all the fluid in the body can be divided into two types of fluid fluid inside the cell and fluid outside the cell isn't it so there is intracellular fluid there is extracellular fluid as i told you life evolved from the sea from the salty water so every cell is trying its best to keep the more and more sodium out or in out is that right this is logical isn't it so for this purpose there is a very special type of gene here right and this gene when it expresses and this gene expresses in every cell this gene expresses in every human cell and when this gene expresses you know what it is doing it is making a protein and that protein get planted into membranes this protein is planted into membrane this protein is a special type of sodium and potassium transporter right the only the major purpose of this protein is that keep on throwing the sodium out of cell right and keep on concentrating the potassium into the cell and this protein keep on throwing sodium out of the cell in spite of the fact that there is already lot of sodium outside it means it is pumping the sodium against the concentration gradient is that right and it is constantly bringing potassium into cell and cells are already rich in potassium but still it brings more potassium in so again it is pumping potassium inside the cell against the concentration gradient so it means it is doing uphill task it is concentrating the sodium outside the cell and it is concentrating the potassium into the cell so it is sodium potassium pump and because it is working against the concentration gradient and it is doing uphill task this protein needs energy and it uses as a fuel atp what it is uses atp atp whenever it is working right it will use the one molecule of atp and break it down into adp plus phosphate and when terminal phosphate is broken right it gets energy and with that energy it will pump the sodium out and potassium in and because this protein this protein is now called sodium potassium pump or because it use it has a special component which can utilize the atp and break down the atp so this protein is also called sodium potassium atpase sodium potassium atpase so every cell has sodium potassium atpases in its membrane and these atpases are all the time throwing the sodium out and concentrating the potassium in so that cells are just like bags of potassium floating into the sea of sodium so now on what you have to remember that cells are the bags of the potassium of course there are many other things also but in our present discussion cells are very rich in potassium floating into the sea of extracellular fluid rich in sodium. sodium is that right no problem in understanding this and of course this process is utilizing atp atp energy can you believe it that out of the most of the energy which you your cells are using right now the chemical energy right now all your cells are using 25% is used only by these proteins it's a great amount of energy right now in your body 25% of the cellular energy is utilized just to keep the potassium in and just to keep the sodium, sodium out now as you know everything in the world is not fair uh, this pump is also not fair it's a bit unfair how it is unfair even though it's charging the energy but it is doing a little bit trick that it takes three sodium out but 
it brings only two potassium n. So it means if this pump work 1000 time, it will bring 3000 sodium out and it will take 2000 potassium n. So in spite of the fact that it is concentrating the sodium out and concentrating the potassium n, but still if you look at the according to the charges, it is if it work this pump work 1000 time, it means it is pump out pump out 3000 cations outward. Cations are positively charged ions. So it is bringing 3000 cations out and it is bringing 2000 cations n. So this pump while it is working, it is unfair because it is leading to net loss of cations. It is throwing with every revolution, it is throwing three cations out and bringing two cations in. So it as it works more and more, right? The total amount of cations lost from the cells are more and total amount of cations gained into cells are relatively little less. So it means practically when these cells uh, these pumps are operative, cell is practically losing cations outward. So when more cations are lost from the cell and less cations are going into the cell, it means cell is gradually getting electro negative. negative. Because remember, these cations are having with them, for example, potassium has, potassium is a cation. It does have some anions with it. Is that right? You don't know cations and anion. Okay, listen. Write it down for today onward. All your body fluids are physiologically, not all, but most of your body fluids are electrically neutral. Where there are cations, they are always having some anions. For example, there are some proteins in the cytoplasm and those proteins are negatively charged. You, know, you must be knowing proteins have amino acids, isn't it? And many amino acids that body pH are negatively charged. Is that right? So the cytoplasmic proteins are negatively charged. So they, they also act as anion. Then in the cell there are a lot of phosphates and phosphates are also negatively charged. So these are just few examples. So I am saying cell is having cations and anions and their number is normal. But what is happening here that it is pumping the more cations out and bringing less cations in. So actually as it keep on working there is net loss of cations from the cell. And of course when some cations are lost and anions are there, so cell become electro negative. negative. It means when the sodium potassium ATPases work, they make cell interior slightly electro negative. negative. Now that electro negativity, okay, because this pump is producing electro negativity, we call them electrogenic pumps. Write it down. What are electrogenic pump? Any pump which work across the membrane and during its function, it produces some electrical imbalance, we say that pump is electrogenic pump. Sodium potassium ATPases are electrogenic pump because they do some electrical imbalance. What is the electrical imbalance? As I said many times, they lead to more loss of cations and less gain of cation to the cell. So there is a net loss of cations and cell interior because it is losing progressively more cations, so it becomes electro negative. This electronegativity which is now established in the cell due to actions of sodium potassium ATPases, this electronegativity is called, yes please, this electronegativity is called, Dr. Safai is saying that this electronegativity is called, what you say, you say something, anyone, please don't say it, I am trying to ignore and you say wrong things. <laughs> This is not resting membrane potential. This is what I want to put in your mind. Look, by the function of sodium potassium ATPases, interior of the cell become electronegative as compared to the exterior only minus 5 millivolt. You know what is the value of resting membrane potential suppose in cardiac cells? It is minus 90 millivolt. So resting membrane potential in the cells is somewhere about minus 90 millivolt. Is that right? What I mean by this that if you put some voltmeter here 
and put neutral electrode outside and put another electrode inside, this will move to the minus 90 millivolt. Is that right? So inside of the membrane, cell membranes are electrically negative approximately minus 90 millivolt as compared to the outside. Is that right? Yeah. It varies from cell to cell a little bit. Some are minus 80, some are minus 70. But this sodium potassium ATPases produces electronegativity of only minus 5. It may be a little contribution to resting membrane potential. You get it? If you want to create resting membrane potential, you have to produce electronegativity inside the membrane. How much? Minus 90. And how much this pump has helped us? Only minus 5. So directly, this pump does not help much to create the resting membrane potential. There must be some other mechanism as well. Do you agree or not? There must be some other mechanism. Now, let's go to the very basics of life. Sodiums are like, uh, let's suppose, like boys. And potassiums are like girls. We just pause for a while. Now look at this nasty pump. It is throwing the boys out and concentrating the girls in. Eventually what will happen? I think all of you know now. What will happen eventually? Look, here the sodium. Right, okay. Mr. Sodium. Very sad. Why it is very sad? It's concentrated outside and it wants to go? It's very logical, isn't it? And this nasty pump taking those sodiums and throwing the boys out, throwing the sodium out. And for every three boys thrown in, it takes two girls in. For every three boys thrown out, it takes two girls in. Right? And now, even she's not very happy. Or will she be happy? A girl surrounded by the girls everywhere. <laughs> Little bit sad. <laughs> Is that right? They are sat there, she is sat there. Sodium is concentrated outward, it wants to go in. Potassium is being concentrated out inside, it wants to go out. And hold this pump has produced only electronegativity of minus five. 5 or minus 4 millivolt, which is not enough. So, what really happens? This was our first gene in our discussion. Of course, there are many genes in the cell. This was our first gene, which was sodium potassium ATPase gene. Okay, let's suppose this cell expresses one more gene. It has one more gene, rather two more gene, which I'm drawing here. Let's suppose this gene also expresses. When this gene expresses, it makes proteins and those proteins also get stuck into membranes. In most of the cell, this gene expresses a lot. And when this gene makes the proteins, those protein get embedded into cell membrane. Let me make this protein. And this protein, of course, this, uh, what is this? This is made of peptide chains. Let me tell you exactly how it is. You get it? What is happening? These are peptide 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, whatever their number. What I'm saying that this gene is making some peptides and those peptides clump together and they make a pore. And this pore is embedded in the cell membrane and it is aqueous pore. If this pore is inside lined by electronegativity, so it will attract cations. This pore specially allow or this channel specially allow the movement of potassium. Is that right? But they don't allow the sodium to move across. If we want sodium to move, move, we can make special sodium channels also. Right? But in this cell, which we are studying, hypothetical cell, let's suppose sodium channel making gene is not working. But potassium channel forming genes are working. Now, these proteins, which are now potassium channels, they are planted into cell membrane. So these are the gates for boys or girls? Girls. Now look at it. Nature is so good to them. They want to go out, they are allowed to go out. Look at now. Yeah. <laughs> they are allowed to go out if they want to. But look at it. 
ठीक है ना दिस इज फॉर गर्ल्स इट्स फॉर पोटाशियम सोडियम कैन नॉट यूज इट इट्स वेरी एंग्री यू नो लुक एट इट राइट देर नाउ सोडियम इज ट्रैप्ड आउटसाइड इवन इट सम हाउ इट गेट एन इट विल बी अगेन थ्रोन आउट पोटाशियम इज कॉन्सेंट्रेटेड एन बट इट इज ऑल्सो अलाउड टू मूव आउट or it is allowed to move across the membrane because this channel does not determine in which direction potassium will move they just allow the potassium to come or move through this channel it's up to potassium in which direction it want to move we'll see what are the factors we determine the movement of the potassium but right now you trust me what i'm saying what happened up to now sodium potassium 80 pages were planted into membrane cell started throwing the sodium out concentrating the potassium in put sodium is concentrated outward it loves to go in along its concentration gradient you know things move from high concentration to low concentration, low concentration. you studied it in high school still it hold true so sodium is trying to come in and potassium has been concentrated in so concentration gradient determines potassium should move out but this cell is having potassium channels but it does not have sodium channels these special type of potassium channels which i have expressed here these are potassium leaky channel they are ungated channels they are unregulated channels they are open all the time right because there are many types of channels which cell may have i will discuss it later that channels which may be present in the cell they may be ungated channels ungated channels ungated channels mean channels which are working all the time regardless of the situations so we call them simply leaky channels leaky channels then there are some other channels which have special gates which have special gates these gates only open at a particular voltage we call these channels voltage gated channels we will discuss them later and then there is another group of channels right and these channels are having a special type of arrangement where a particular substance bind if a particular substance bind only then they open or close so it means they are ligand gated channel ligand mean a special substance specific substance which can bind to this and change its activity so ligand gated channels for a while you just trust me that your cells have cell membranes have many types of channels but broadly they can be categorized into three types of channel they are ungated channels all the time open some channels which are only operative with at a specific voltage and the other channels which are only operated when a specific substance activate them for example they may be activated by a neurotransmitter or they may be activated by a hormone or they may be activated by some second messenger so such channels which are activated by a specific substance we call them ligand gated channels right now we are talking about these potassium channels these are ungated channels they are all the time we will look again how what a big favor they are having the special pathways that whenever they love they can love to exit out easily there are special channels no need of special substance to open these channels no need of special voltage to open these channels so these are potassium ungated potassium channels or potassium leaky channels which are expressing in this cell now let's see the behavior of this potassium that what is happening a lot of potassium present in the cell and cell membrane is now permeable to the potassium lot of sodium present outside the cell but cell membrane is not permeable to sodium now we'll see what really happens to the cell and how this uh, potassium behaves right it's ready to rush out isn't it so let's suppose this is the potassium right and very happy and it is willing to go out now why it should go out because concentration gradient is a force which is taking it out because concentration of potassium is more inside the cell concentration of potassium is less outside the cell due to the activity of sodium potassium atp is so of course potassium will love to move from high concentration to the low concentration if there is a pathway available and luckily this cell has lot of potassium channels so potassium has a option to leak out now what will be the driving force for the potassium to move out the driving force is concentration gradient 
Is that right? Now, let's suppose we see what really happened. I will make a big channel here so you really see what happened. Now, this potassium has very strong concentration gradient. Yes, please. Concentration gradient outward. But remember one thing. This pump has produced how much electronegativity? Minus 5. Cell interior is how much electronegative? Minus 5 millivolt. Now, potassium is cation or A9? Cation. It is positively charged. Now, when positive charges are trying to move out, this electronegativity will try to hold it in. Right? Because electronegativity try to hold the positive cations. But concentration gradient is taking the potassium out. So it means, what is the force inward? A very small force, minus 5 millivolt. And this minus 5 millivolt can be called what? There is concentration gradient to taking it, driving it out, and this is electrical gradient. Electrical force, electrostatic force, or electrical gradient. So what really happening there? This is just like a girl who have to make the CN. Along the concentration gradient, she knows her future is good if she moves out. They are already locked in, and boys are not coming in. But there is something in the heart which is holding it back. But she is not much confused. Concentration gradient outward is very strong, but electrical gradient inward is very weak. So net electrochemical force which is driving this potassium ion is outward. So it will start leaking outward. As more and more potassium is going out through these potassium leaky channels, inside will become more and more electro negative. negative. Again, as potassium has high concentration in and low concentration out due to the activity of sodium potassium at phases, right? So along strong concentration gradient, right? With very little electro gradient, electrical gradient holding the potassium in and powerful concentration gradient pushing the potassium out. So this potassium start diffusing outward. As potassium start diffusing out, as potassium start diffusing out, cell become more and more electro negative. Progressively cell is becoming more and more electro negative. Am I clear? Because this potassium is going out but leaving its canine, oh, sorry, not canine, girls don't have canines. As potassium is moving out, it is leaving its anion. Anions behind because the anions are very big like phosphates or like proteins which cannot move out. So what is really happening? That Potassium is moving out, or diffusing out under the influence of very powerful concentration gradient, right, and leaving its anions behind. So inside become progressively more and more electronegative. Now, cell was minus 5 millivolt, then it became minus 15, then more potassium diffuse out, minus 25, more potassium diffuse out, minus 50. It means potassium is diffusing out and potential in the membrane is changing and this potential is changing due to diffusion of potassium. potassium. It's very easy to understand that because potassium concentration across the membrane was different and membrane was permeable to potassium, so potassium was moving and when it was moving out, this ion was moving out, then elect you can say the potential in the membrane is changing. It is changing. Now, this potential which is growing, this electrical potential which is building or which is developing due to diffusion of the potassium is called diffusion potential. What is it called? Diffusion, diffusion potential. Is that right? So, as more and more potassium diffuses out, cell will develop more and more diffusion potential due to potassium. Am I right? So, diffusion potential is developing. What is diffusion potential now? This is electronegativity developing in the cell due to diffusion of potassium outward as cell is losing the cations and retaining the anions. So, cell become more and more electronegativity. So, when it become more and more electronegative, what will happen? Gradually, concentration gradient does not change much because total potassium is too much, but still, 
as cell become more and more electronegative due to loss of potassium the electro electrical gradient will progressively growing as cell is becoming more and more electronegative as potassium is diffusing out inside is becoming more and more electro negative so it means that as potassium is moving out for remaining potassium to leave the cell is becoming easier or difficult difficult, difficult. is that right as more and more girls leave they are making rest of the girls difficult to leave is that right again what happened first of all sodium potassium ATP is through all the sodium out outside sodium rich area and concentrated the potassium in cell becomes potassium rich along the concentration gradient sodium want to come in but this cell membrane is not permeable to sodium is that right so even though sodium is very frustrated I mean but it is unable to come in because there are no channels available potassium is concentrated in it will love to go out and luckily potassium leaky channels are also available in the membrane so we say concentration gradient for the potassium is outward but luckily membrane is also permeable to potassium so potassium start diffusing out as potassium start diffusing out along the concentration gradient right cell become more and more interior of the cell become more and more electro negative so due to diffusion out of the potassium membrane is developing an electrical potential this electrical potential which is developing due to diffusion of the potassium is called potassium diffusion potential is that right as time passes by and this time is very short but anyway as time pass passes by it is a little bit confused right but still let's suppose concentration gradient is 4 pushing it out and electrical gradient is 3 in the beginning concentration gradient was 4 electrical gradient was only one remember out of the total potassium very little shift very little diffusion of potassium occurs to produce significant diffusion potential now so it will also slip out but this this slipped out very rapidly and this slipped out relatively slowly now look at another situation now a lot of some significant amount of Potassium has diffused out, producing more and more electronegativity in the cell and more and more diffusion potential. A time comes, a time comes that electronegativity in the cell becomes so much that this girl becomes confused. Why she is confused? She doesn't know what to do. Why? Because, okay, it should be really made here. There's a potassium in the channel and really confused why because concentration gradient outward and electrical gradient inward have become absolutely equal <coughs> now what will happen will there be any net movement of potassium no now in spite of the fact that membrane is still permeable to potassium there will be no net movement of potassium across the membrane to be very true statement the real statement should be that now put amount uh, number of ions of potassium going out under the concentration gradient are absolutely equal to the number of ions of potassium coming in under the electrical gradient so this chemical gradient or concentration gradient moving potassium out an electrical gradient holding the potassium in has become absolutely equal so at this potential at which diffusion potential has developed so much again listen potassium started going out and developed electronegativity inside the cell because this electronegativity was developed due to diffusion of potassium so we say this is potassium diffusion potential is that right as more and more potassium goes out electronegative potassium diffusion potential inside the cell become more and more in its value a times come that diffusion potential of potassium becomes equal to the concentration gradient is that right diffusion potential of the potassium become strong enough to oppose exactly the concentration of chemical gradient when diffusion potential becomes strong enough when diffusion potential of the potassium becomes strong enough 
to stop the net movement of the potassium, we say potassium has achieved a equilibrium between its concentration gradient and electrical gradient. And that potential at which equilibrium is achieved, that potential is simply called equilibrium. That is called equilibrium potential. <laughs> Learn an easy way. Don't jump around. I know kangaroos are around. Now listen. This is equilibrium potential step by step. It's so simple. Potassium is trapped in and then allowed to diffuse. It is diffusing out. As it diffuses more and more, cell develop diffusion potential. A time comes, diffusion potential becomes strong enough to oppose and balance the concentration gradient or chemical uh, concentration gradient. So when electrical gradient becomes equal to concentration gradient, we say there is equilibrium between them. So when diffusion potential becomes strong enough to oppose the concentration gradient so much that there is no net movement of the ion across the membrane, in spite of the fact that membrane is still permeable to potassium, we say that membrane, ha uh, membrane has achieved a potential which is developing electrochemical equilibrium for, for potassium. Is that right? So that will be called potassium equilibrium potential. Normally, listen now, normally Concentration of potassium outside is 4 milli. What is that? Millimole. Concentration cannot be in millivolt. Concentration is 4 millimole per liter. And normally in human cell, concentration of potassium inside is about 140 millimole per liter. Again, listen. Normally in the human cell, concentration of potassium inside is about about 140 millimole per liter and outside is about 4 millimole per liter. Is that right? At these concentration differences, when potassium slips out, even a very small amount of potassium slips out, it keep on developing what? It keep on developing electronegativity in the cell, keep on developing diffusion potential until diffusion potential becomes strong enough to oppose the concentration gradient and that is the moment when in spite of the fact that membrane is permeable to potassium, concentration gradient for the potassium outward and electrical gradient inward become absolutely equal and potassium achieves electrochemical balance or equilibrium and that potential at which this equilibrium is achieved, that is called equilibrium potential for what? Potassium. For potassium. Do you know what is the another name for equilibrium potential? This girl is going to impress all of you. What is the other name? <laughs> Look, I can bet you have heard the other name of equilibrium potential. Okay, that girl. Yes. She is very impressive, you know. She will tell us. I will not her mention her name. Okay, you have to give coke me later on after the class. Offer me a good coke. I will not take your name, so that should not be recorded, right? But you can tell me, what is the other name for equilibrium potential? You have heard of it. Yes, this young man. Anyone? Yes, please. Anyone? Okay, let me tell you. That is called Naranst potential. That's so oh. easy. What is Naran's potential? Oh my God. Naran's potential for potassium is equilibrium potential for potassium. You can pronounce in many different ways and I have my private pronunciation but I hope you understand it. So what is Naran's potential for the potassium? Naran's potential for the potassium is equilibrium potential for the potassium. What is equilibrium potential? Equilibrium potential is the diffusion potential of the potassium at which net movement of the potassium is zero in spite of the fact that membrane is fully permeable to potassium. Yes, please, you have a question. Yeah, just to be exactly clear, the nurse is the same exact thing? Yeah, same, same. same yeah. You Why do you have so doubt? No, I just want to make I th actually, you people think it should be made somewhat difficult and we should look like this. Then we think we are studying Naran's potential. You can study it easily. That any ion has a concentration difference across the membrane and membrane is permeable to that ion only. And when that ion moves, it produces potential. And when movement of ion produces enough potential, diffusion of the ion produces enough diffusion potential, that net movement of the ion eventually stop due to balance opposing factors of electrical gradient and concentration gradient, we say that membrane has achieved 
equilibrium potential for that specific ion or Dr. Narans found it and we are still in trouble. So sometimes we stamp his name that membrane has achieved Narans potential for what? For potassium. That is so simple. I hope it's clear. Right? Okay. Now actually Narans potential for potassium is at these concentration gradient when inside is 140 and outside is 40 millimole, the Narans potential is about minus 85 millivolt. What does it mean? Equilibrium potential or Narans potential for what? Potassium. So it means that in a cell which is having intracellular concentration of potassium about 140 millimole per liter and extracellular concentration of potassium of about 4 millimole per liter and if its membrane is significantly permeable to potassium then potassium will start diffusing out from high concentration to low concentration as cations are going out right and leaving the anions behind inside the cell become more and more electronegative right and this due to diffusion out of the potassium the potential which is developing inside the cell is called diffusion potential and a diffusion potential eventually will reach at a value right at which concentration gradient outward and electrical gradient inward become equal and we say that membrane has achieved diffusion potential right at which potassium is in electrochemical equilibrium so that diffusion potential at which electrochemical forces become into balance we say that is equilibrium potential for potassium and that is also called Nernst potential am I clear? Claro? Okay, thank you. <laughs> now, so if this cell is minus 90 millivolt resting membrane potential, what we have made, minus 5 millivolt may be due to electrogenic sodium potassium ATPases and minus 85 millivolt has been generated by the diffusion out of potassium. potassium. Is it clear? Now we take another example. We, you just forget the boys, very bad. Let's talk about sodium. They sh sodium should be given a chance. And you know, whenever sodium gets a chance, a membrane becomes permeable to sodium, that desperately come in. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> right? That I will talk about in action potential, when the real action starts. But right now, your minds are working in very suspicious ways, I feel. <laughs> right. Now, this is another cell. This is the second cell. This was our first cell, which was having a lot of potassium in and a lot of sodium out due to sodium potassium ATPases and this first cell membrane was permeable to yes. potassium only. So potassium diffusion out produced enough diffusion potential that eventually potassium developed, membrane developed equilibrium, equilibrium potential for the potassium and in spite of the fact membrane is still permeable to potassium, net movement of potassium stopped. Am I clear? Now we see another situation. Start with the same thing. First of all, what is this gene starting? Sodium potassium, ATP. So this cell has also sodium potassium, ATP. And if this cell has a lot of sodium potassium, ATP, story will be the same. Sodium is constantly coming out. So extracellular fluid is becoming rich in sodium. Right? And of course, they are also taking potassium in and making intracellular fluid rich in potassium and already you know for every three sodium expelled two potassium are brought in with the it right so again this is electrogenic pump because cations lost or more than cations gained and inside become about minus millivolt due to electrogenic activity of sodium potassium it pays am i clear there's no problem thank you this part was same as this but this time we'll give a chance to the boys what we do this gene which makes which channels potassium channels suppose we make it off and by some magic we activate the genes in the cell which can make what okay. special channels for the sodium. sodium so a lot of sodium channels are this gene expresses of course you know it messenger RNA and translation and protein and membrane has a lot of what Sodium, okay, let me make some big way these 
I think some of you are happy, especially boys. Now this membrane in second cell is different than the membrane in first cell. In the first cell, membrane was permeable to Sodium. potassium. In second cell, we have made the membrane permeable to Sodium. sodium and let's see what happened. You already know that sodium is well concentrated outside and less concentrated inside. So what really happens that sodium will love to move in. Now look at it. Very happy. Right? This membrane is permeable to sodium. Now in the beginning, the concentration gradient for sodium is in because sodium is more outside and less inside. All this is done by this nasty sodium potassium ATPase because it was keeping more sodium out, right? So sodium was well concentrated outside. So it will, if membrane is permeable to sodium, the sodium will love to move in. The concentration gradient for the sodium is inward. And what about electrical gradient? In the beginning, if it is minus five, a little electrical gradient is also inward. So initially, concentration gradient and electrical gradient both help it electromotive forces to move in. So this happily comes in. When it comes in, what it does? Electronegativity is neutralized. You know, when cell is now gaining cations or losing cations? So cell is gaining cations. The sodium under its powerful concentration gradient will move in the cell, then this electronegativity is lost. So what we say, it will become zero, right? Now, once it is zero, do you think any more sodium will be coming in under the influence of elect uh, electrical gradient? No, but don't be sad, right? Still sodium will come in, you know, it's very determined. And why it will come in? Yes, because concentration gradient is powerful. Even though there's no more electrical gradient now, but still it has powerful concentration gradient, it drives the sodium in. So more sodiums come in. Now, inside it will become electro positive, maybe plus 10. So sodium will keep on coming in under concentration gradient power. Sodium will keep on coming in under concentration gradient power. And inside will become progressively more and more electro positive. So what will really happen? That here, now this sodium man is a little bit thoughtful. He doesn't know where to go. Should go here or there. Why? Because concentration gradient is pushing it in. But because inside is becoming progressively electro positive, so electrical gradient is pushing it out. But this man will keep on coming in and inside will become progressively more and more electro positive. So we say diffusion in of the sodium ions is producing diffusion potential for sodium. Membrane is now developing a diffusion potential for what ion? Sodium. Because what is diffusing across the membrane? Sodium. So we say when membrane is made permeable to the sodium, due to its concentration gradient, sodium rush in. And as sodium progressively diffuses inside the cell, interior of the cell become progressively more and more electro positive. So now for sodium, concentration gradient is inward, but electrical gradient is outward. This uh, electro positivity, which is developing inside the cell due to diffusion in of sodium, this is called diffusion potential for Sodium. So now membrane is developing diffusion potential for which ion? For sodium. Is that right? And until a time will come that diffusion potential become of sodium, diffusion potential for sodium across the membrane becomes strong enough to oppose the balance out the concentration gradient. And when this is achieved, Right, then concentration gradient inward and electrical gradient outward become absolutely equal. And when they become absolutely equal, in spite of the fact that membrane are perme still permeable to sodium. sodium, at that particular potential, when diffusion potential of the membrane for sodium become strong enough, 
that it does not allow any more sodium to come in in spite of the concentration Absolutely. gradient then we say membrane has achieved equilibrium potential for sodium, sodium. membrane has achieved equilibrium potential for sodium. sodium normally the sodium concentration outside and inside the ratio is like this that equilibrium potential should be somewhere around plus 60 millivolt or 65 millivolt what what does it mean that when sodium started coming in under the concentration gradient inside became progressively more and more electropositive and membrane started developing diffusion potential for sodium right until diffusion potential of sodium becomes plus 65 millivolt inside and this is strong enough right that in spite of the concentration gradient of sodium inside the electrical gradient or diffusion potential of sodium does not allow further influx of the sodium and we say at plus 65 millivolt sodium can the net movement of sodium across the membrane becomes zero in spite of the fact that membrane is still permeable to sodium this is a behavior which is different than boys the doors are open but they say okay we have achieved a equilibrium they are very sensible so we say the membrane has achieved which potential equilibrium potential for sodium our membrane has achieved nernst potential for sodium is that clear so it means a membrane of a cell membrane will be at a particular moment having Nernst potential of potassium or Nernst potential of sodium it depends on that membrane at a particular time is permeable to potassium or permeable to sodium. sodium. Is that right? Let's make it very simple. This is a room, it's suppose full of girls and there are a lot of boys outside. If only girls are allowed to diffuse out, the potential changes are Oh yeah, he thinks negatively. He says if girls are allowed to move out, they are more negative and you think boys make things positively. I understand. You don't look, so, you are not so simple as you look. Right. So, but he's right. Right, somehow he figured out if potassium moves out, it cell, interior of the cell become, cell membrane become progressively negative. And if potassium moves in, interior of the cell become progressively positive. Is that right? Now listen, if all human cells are all the time permeable to potassium then cells will be having potential all the time cells will have their membrane potential near the potassium equilibrium near the potassium equilibrium potential but if all the cells in the body are freely permeable to sodium then all the cells will have their membrane potential near the equilibrium potential of sodium right now listen carefully what is the difference in cell number 1 and cell number 2? Cell number 1 is minus 85 millivolt and cell number 2 is plus 65 millivolt. Uh, this has, this cell is freely permeable to potassium. So it has achieved Nernst potential or equilibrium potential for potassium. This cell was freely permeable to sodium. This cell was freely permeable to sodium and so this cell membrane has achieved equilibrium potential for sodium. So any cell membrane which achieves equilibrium potential for sodium, the potential in the cell will be plus 65 or near that. And any cell which is at any moment freely permeable to potassium, its uh, potential should be minus 85 millivolt. Is that clear? Cell number 1 and 2 Hypothetical cells, you understand from where they develop the certain types of potentials across the membrane? Good. Now, when scientists, the researchers, when they studied the potential in the normal human cells, in most of the cells they found when they put electrode, one electrode inside the cell, right, and outside the neutral electrode, in most of the cells, human cells, they found that when cells are not electrically stimulated, when cells are resting comfortably, scientists found that the membrane potential was somewhere between minus 70 to minus 90 
millivolt. We called that potential as resting membrane potential. So what is the resting membrane potential? Resting membrane potential is present in almost all cells and this is a potential difference across the cell membranes right of somewhere around 80 millivolt with negative inside right so most of the cells which are resting cells electrically when cells are not electrically stimulated right most of the cells have resting membrane potential of about minus 80 minus 90 minus 70 is that right you tell me this resting membrane potential this is a resting membrane potential which is present in almost every cell this is more near to the equilibrium potential of potassium or it is more near to the equilibrium potential of sodium it is more, oh he could figure out so he says that if most of the cells have resting membrane potential of somewhere around minus 80 so of course they are having if they are having resting membrane potential which is more near to the equilibrium potential of potassium and resting cells human resting cells uh, have resting membrane potential which is far away from equilibrium potential of sodium so can you figure out from where the cells develop their resting membrane potential they are behaving like type no, cell number one or they are behaving like type cell number two cell number one it means that our most of the cells which are having resting membrane potential near minus 80 or minus 90 millivolt their cell membranes are freely permeable to yes. potassium and they are not freely permeable to yes. sodium that is why most of the normal human cells has all the time electrical potential with negative polarity inside the cell near the potassium equilibrium potential am I clear now if someone asks you <coughs> what is the genesis of resting membrane potential why resting membrane potential is there how it is produced answer is very simple we can sum it up in all the human cells number one they have a lot of sodium potassium ATP this they're concentrating the sodium out in potassium in. so it means all the cells are very rich in yes. potassium yes. step number two resting cells are not permeable to sodium but they are very very permeable to yes. potassium so resting cells all human resting cells they lose a little bit potassium and this diffuse every cell diffuses a little bit potassium they have a lot of potassium in they diffuse a little bit potassium to develop enough diffusion potential of the potassium the further potassium will not leak out and that happens to be around minus 80 millivolt so human resting cells are allowed to achieve Nuren's potential for potassium when they are resting is that right and this potassium diffusion out or potassium efflux which normally occurs in all resting cells right is responsible mainly for the genesis of resting membrane potential that's so simple now this is a very tricky question which sometimes is asked what is the role of sodium potassium AT pages in resting membrane potential already we have given a statement the resting membrane potential is mainly produced mainly mainly produced by diffusion out of you see some of you are sleeping we just made a statement that most of the cells have resting membrane potential because their cell membranes are permeable to potassium so this is diffusion out of the potassium from the resting membrane which is responsible to generate mainly resting membrane potential is that right now you know why your every cell has resting membrane potential because simply cells are leaky to potassium that's it this is the main reason but what is the role of sodium potassium ATPases you can say the direct role of sodium potassium ATPases or direct contribution of sodium potassium ATPases in resting membrane potential is very little out of minus 90 only minus 5 the direct contribution of sodium potassium ATPases to the resting membrane potential is very little that even though sodium potassium ATPases are electrogenic pump and they throw more cations out and bring less cation in they do produce some electronegativity inside the cell but it is usually minus 
4 minus 5 millivolt, right? So it's a very small contribution to the total resting memory potential in a healthy cell. Is that right? But they have a very powerful indirect role. What is that indirect role? Indirect role is that these, why potassium was diffusing out? Because there was a lot of potassium in. Why potassium was diffusing out? Because there was a lot of potassium in. Who brought so much potassium in? Sodium potassium ATP. So this is their real role. That the real role of sodium potassium ATP is to maintain high concentration of potassium in and low high concentration of sodium out. And because they keep very high, sodium potassium ATP pages are responsible to keep high concentration of potassium in and low concentration of potassium out. So they give a chance to the potassium to leak out. So that membrane achieves equilibrium potential for potassium. And that is the main contribution to resting membrane potential. Am I clear? No problem up to this. Now look. When cells are resting, the membranes are have potential. This potential, which is inside the membrane, normally in a resting cell is electropositive inside or electronegative inside? Electronegative inside. Is that right? Because resting cells are membranes which are freely permeable to potassium. And potassium escape from inside to outside produces electronegativity inside. So we say the resting membrane potential, which is present in almost every cell, have a negative polarity inside or we say inner side of the cell membrane is polarized negatively. In the resting cell right now in most of your cells their membranes electrical potential inside is polarized negatively. Is that right? So the negative polarization of the potential to the inner lamina of the cell membranes. Is it clear? Now let's come to this thing. Sometimes in some cells, which are excitable cells, excitable cells are neurons and muscle cells. That we'll discuss in uh, next lectures in detail. But for a while, you just trust me, I'm right. That there are neurons and muscle cells, and neurons and muscle cells have special type of sodium channels. They are very special type of sodium channels. And these sodium channels can be activated. If by any means, you activate the sodium channels in the what? Cell membrane of a neuron. Now listen carefully. If by any means you activate the sodium channels in cell membrane of a neuron, a cell membrane of a muscle, and suddenly a lot of sodium channels open. Suddenly membrane change from potassium permeable to sodium permeable membranes of the neurons, or potassium to sodium permeable membranes of muscle cells. So again listen. What we have done? We have a trick to convert cell number 1 into cell number 2. What is the trick? This trick can only be played in neurons and muscle cells. Other cells refuse to follow this trick. Why other cells cannot be trickily converted from type uh, first cell to second cell? Because other, cell, other than the neurons and other than the muscle cells, the rest of the cells in the body do not have significant number of special sodium channels. They don't have special sodium channels. We'll talk about those sodium channels later on. But neurons and the muscle cells have very special type of sodium and calcium channels, cationic channels, which can be stimulated. So if this cell is a, suppose neuron cell, listen now, suppose this is a neuron cell and it is resting happily. So what will be its resting membrane potential? Minus 90 millivolt. So it means its membranes are highly permeable to potassium. But if you stimulate it appropriately, <coughs> Suddenly, millions and millions of sodium channels open into its membrane, which were previously closed. And when a lot of sodium channels are activated briskly, suddenly membrane becomes sodium permeable. Sodium gets a chance. What sodium will try to do? It will rush in. Why? Why sodium will go in? Because, because of course, chemical gradient is, concentration gradient push the sodium. What sodium will now try? For a very short time, listen carefully, for a very short time, when you stimulated this cell membrane, for a very short time, it became extremely permeable to sodium. So sodium has a chance to permeate the membrane. When sodium will pass through the membrane, it will try its best. It will try its best. It frustrated sodium. It was outside for a long time. 
it will try its best to bring the membrane potential to its own equilibrium potential. Sodium will try its best to bring the potential of the membrane towards its own equilibrium potential. What is its own equilibrium potential? Minus plus 65. But what was originally resting membrane potential? Minus 90 millivolt. So originally, when this cell was resting like this, it was minus 90 millivolt resting membrane potential. It was potassium leaky cell. By appropriate stimulation, suddenly we made cell membranes highly permeable to sodium. A lot of sodium jump in. And the sodium will do its best to take this resting membrane potential towards what? To the sodium Nernst potential or sodium equilibrium potential. So a lot of sodium will come in and it will progressively lose its negative polarity. Minus 90, minus 60, minus 30. Oh my god, zero. Maybe plus. But before it could reach to plus 65, doors close. Word is hard on man, isn't it? Doors close. They're just shut off. These channels are designed in such a way that when they are, okay, let me tell you, this is a very funny door. They are having a door like this and one door like this. Double, double doors on these channels. Right? These are not wooden doors. They are peptide chains. At a particular voltage, when you stimulate, one door, door starts opening. But these doors are linked with each other. When this door is activating, when this door is activating, it is opening, it start closing. And for a very brief time, membrane becomes somewhat, this channel becomes somewhat like this. That activation gate is activated, inactivation gate is still not closed. For this very short time, that frustrated sodium has a chance to come in and try to bring the resting membrane potential towards its own equilibrium potential. But before it could really come in enough amount, when, oh my god, that's very sad. What really happens? Before it really come up, it is closed from there. So what happens? The sodium cannot come in enough. But still it is so naughty, it comes enough amount of sodium come in, that resting membrane potential which was electronegative, it take it towards Zero first. It becomes less negative, less negative, and then zero. It means, and it may become somewhat positive also. So it means that influx of sodium created a situation in which resting membrane potential was rapidly neutralized. Resting membrane potential was electronegative. As more and more sodium jumps in, electronegativity is neutralized. So we say that as more and more sodium was coming in, negatively polarized membrane is progressively losing its polarity. We say cell membrane is becoming depolarized. What is happening? It is becoming depolarized and girls will take, you know, intercom. What is intercom? Revenge. <laughs> lot of, as soon as they shut off, lot of, they go back and make it again minus 90. We say, oh, membrane has again become repolarized. It has become repolarized. About this depolarization and repolarization and how they run after each other, we'll talk in the next lecture. Is that right? So today we just talked about that whenever there is a there is a concentration gradient difference across a membrane. Is that right? And membrane is permeable to one ion due to concentration gradient difference that ion will move across the membrane and produce electrical potential and that electrical potential is produced by diffusion of the ion so that electrical potential should be called diffusion potential. A time comes that diffusion potential becomes so strong that it opposes the and balances the concentration, concentration gradient which was produced due to imbalance of the concentrations. So when diffusion potential balances out the concentration gradient then net movement of the ion stop in spite of the fact that membrane is permeable we say the membrane has achieved the equilibrium potential for that particular ion is that right the same potential is also called Nernst yeah. potential so what we can say when cell is highly permeable cell membrane is highly permeable to sodium the membrane potential will become near to the sorry when cell membrane is highly permeable to potassium then membrane potential will become more near to equilibrium potential of potassium. 
when cell membranes are highly permeable to sodium, then membrane potential will become near to Nernst potential of sodium. Is that right? Because pot right. Because potassium is concentrated in the cell, so whenever membranes are permeable to potassium, potassium moves out, right, and make the cell membrane negatively polarized. But because pot sodium is too much outside, so whenever membrane becomes permeable freely, permeable to sodium, sodium moves in. And negative polarity is lost, and we say membrane is depolarized. Is that right? We mentioned the most of the resting cells have resting membrane potential minus 90, minus 80, or minus somewhere between minus 70 to minus 90 millivolt. So it means most of the resting cells have their resting membrane potential more near to the equilibrium potential of potassium. potassium. So this is the uh, what what we can infer from it. Most of the resting cells have the membranes which are highly permeable to yes. potassium, and this is diffusion out of potassium through potassium leaky channels or through potassium ungated channels, which is responsible mainly to create resting membrane, membrane potential. potential. Right? The little contribution is done directly by the sodium potassium ATPases, but sodium potassium ATPases do play a major role because these diffusion potentials are only created when there is concentration gradient differences across the membrane and sodium potassium ATPases are responsible to maintain the concentration gradient across the membrane by maintaining high concentrations of yes. potassium N and by maintaining high concentration of sodium. sodium out. That's all for today. We'll discuss rest of the thing next time. Now we will continue our discussion about the resting membrane potential and last time we were discussing that Nernst equation uh, is very relevant when we discuss about the resting membrane potential, right? So let me write what is Nernst equation and then I will explain how it is relevant with our discussion of resting membrane potential. Here E stands for equilibrium potential, right? For example, we take a cell over here and there's a concentration of any ion, let's suppose it's potassium, there's a concentration of potassium inside and here's concentration of potassium outside, outside right? We have to see that, of course, if the, if the concentration inside and outside is equal, do you think there will be any flow? No. no. But because there's concentration difference, that is why ions will move. And you know, ions are charged particles. So when they will move, they will produce potential. And we want to know, let's suppose, that there's ion, suppose potassium, and it has the concentration difference between inside the cell and outside the cell, number one. Number two, uh, there is some degree of permeability in the membrane present for the diffusion of this ion. And naturally, as you know, that ion will diffuse down its concentration and electrical gradient and produce a diffusion potential, and diffusion will continue until diffusion potential reaches the value of the Equilibrium potential, also called Nernst potential. I think this is something very simple, you already know, right? We'll just put it in some math mathematical way, just to make our life difficult. Some mathematician have calculated it and made a formula, right? Not a very good thing, but anyway, this is two, minus 2.3 multiplied by RT. Now you must be thinking what is R and what is T, of course I will tell you, right? Divided by ZF. Right, and log of 10, log of 10, and concentration of the substance like potassium inside divided by concentration outside the cell. Right, that will depend, uh, tell us what is the basic equilibrium potential for a given ion, which has concentration difference in and out difference. But what are these things there? What they are doing there, right? Actually, we are converting concentration difference, which is determining the concentration gradient as well as electrical gradient for the movement of the ion, right? So for that purpose, you know temperature affects the movements. So we have put the T is standing for temperature, absolute temperature. And R is standing for what? gas constant, right? And F is standing for the person well known for his electrical, Faraday. Faraday. yeah, Faraday's, Faraday's constant, 
right? And here is the ion charge. For example, it is sodium or potassium, it is plus one. If it is chloride, it's minus one. It's calcium, it is plus two. Is that right? So you understand from where all these things came, right? That it is not, even though intuitively, you can think very clearly that let's go to our back discussion because I really want that conceptually you understand why Naran's equation is there, not only for USMLE step one exam, but it makes some sense. And what is the sense? That inside the cell, as you remember, the potassium concentration is high. And outside the cell, potassium concentration is low. And then we said the cell membrane is permeable to potassium. potassium. Due to that reason, potassium keep on moving from in to out under its concentration gradient, right, until it develops enough electronegativity inside, uh, which will prevent the further diffusion out of the ion. Is that right? Now, first we think intuitively. Let's suppose if we increase the concentration of potassium inside too much, diffusion will be more or less. Okay, let's, okay, just a minute. First of all, in the last lecture, last lecture we said that equilibrium potential, equilibrium potential for the potassium normally in the cell is minus 85 millivolt. That was our last discussion, is that right? In normal situations where intracellular potassium level and extracellular potassium levels are absolutely normal. And uh, cell membrane is sufficiently permeable to potassium. Then enough potassium will diffuse out until it reaches equilibrium potential of minus 85 millivolt. Only then net movement of potassium will stop in spite of the membrane permeability for the potassium. Is that clear? Now, what Naran's equation is meant for? Naran's equation tells you that what should be equilibrium potential at which a particular ion movement will stop in spite of the fact that membrane is still permeable to that ion. Is that right? So naturally, equilibrium potential depends on the ratio of ion inside and outside. Is that right? That is why this component is there. Right? For example, if I too much increase the potassium concentration inside, then concentration gradient, we drive the potassium out, will be more or less. More. When that concentration gradient will become more, more potassium will diffuse out. So equilibrium potential will not be achieved at minus 85. With high levels of intracellular potassium, uh, this may be achieved at minus, maybe minus 95 and so. So it means that changing the potassium concentration inside changes the equilibrium potential. Is that right? If we do opposite, keep the potassium concentration inside normal, but outside, if we increase the potassium concentration, now concentration gradient outward will be less. less. So diffusion out will be less, and it will reach equilibrium potential at lower level of millivolt. So maybe then equilibrium potential will be minus 75 millivolt. By this simple discussion, what I'm trying to put in your mind, I'm trying to tell you that if more girls are inside, the more chances they will come outside and develop higher electrical situation. If there are very few inside, there will be less coming out. Is that right? Now, this discussion is relevant with this. That whenever we, we are looking for the, what should be the equilibrium potential for an ion across the membrane, it depends on the ratio between the concentration of an ion inside divided by the outside. So this thing is very clear. And remaining things, that of course, movements of many things depends on temperature. And then it is gas constant. And then what is this? Farad is constant. And this is value of the ion. And now what is this funny 2.3 2 as if they have calculated with hard work? Uh, what is that? Why it's standing there? Actually, the purpose of this uh, whole thing multiplying by 2.3 is converting the natural log into log 10. What this minus 2.3 is doing? That all the result is converted from natural log to log of 10. You must be thinking that I will explain further. I will not take the risk because I'm not a very good mathematician. Is that right? So I will just uh, give this statement which some of the very big author has written in his book and after that I will jump back to my situation to explain other things. All right? So this makes some sense to you. But I'm very happy with Mr. Guyton. He has made our life as usual somewhat easy. He say he has resolved all these things into single value. According to Mr. Guyton, he say equation can be resolved into 
all this thing, except this ion value, that is equal to 60 millivolt. According to him, let me tell you, 2.3, this, RT by ZF. It, it will change with the ion. This concentration changes for a particular ion, and this thing also changes for a particular ion. But Faraday constant remains constant. So according to Mr. Guyton, this thing is not changing, this thing is not changing, this absolute temperature, uh, when you calculate, it's occurring at human body temperature, 37, he adjusted with that, and Faraday's constant is constant. So he resolved all these things, made the calculation, and he said all this situation is equal to 60 millivolt. What does it mean? Now, all this equation can be simplified into Make it this part disappear, this part disappear, this part disappear, and this part disappear. So it will become with the minus, of course. Minus 60 millivolt by Z. Into, right? Into log of 10. And then you can say concentration inside by concentration outside. Of any ion for which we are looking for. If membrane is permeable for that. I hope uh, this is making some sense. To make the more sense out of it, we'll do an experimental calculation, right? So that we really see that what is there. Let's count everything for sodium. Let's do a sample calculation that this is a cell, right? This is a cell and concentration of, concentration of sodium inside is more or outside is more? Normally, concentration of sodium is outside more, right? Let's suppose in this sample calculation we are going to do, if someone tells you the concentration of sodium outside is 150 millimole per liter, and concentration of sodium inside is, let's suppose, 15 millimole per liter. Now, if someone say that this is a concentration of sodium ion outside and this is a concentration of sodium ion inside, and if membrane is permeable to sodium, normally membranes are not permeable to sodium under resting condition. But in excitable cells like neurons and muscles, when cell, the cell membranes are appropriately excited, suddenly sodium channels open and membranes suddenly become permeable to sodium. sodium. Then sodium is allowed to move down its electrochemical gradients and then membrane will develop equilibrium potential depending upon the values related with sodium. So let's suppose that we are going to find uh, equilibrium potential or electromotive force for the sodium. Same calculation minus 60 millivolt by Z. Z here will be one sodium is monovalent. Is that right? Mm, log 10 by, what is the concentration in? 15 divided by concentration this, 150. And you can resolve it like this, that minus 60 millivolt by plus 1 log of 0.1. And then those mathematicians say it will resolve total thing, something like 60 millivolt. Because log will disappear with this value. Is that right? No. So what does it mean? Um, yeah. If it's to the base of 10, it's going to be like, it can be different. Like say if it's log base of 10 to like say for the 10, then it'll be 1. It will cancel out. Yeah. So, so eventually value, where it will be, resolve? That value would be like maybe 6 millivolts instead. No, 60 is here, my friend. All this resolve into 1. If, if you're taking log base of 10, no, what is the log base? Of, look, this thing will resolve into what value? That would be like uh, one. Like one. No, it would be like uh, to a negative one. Near one. Like All this thing is near one. Log of point one. Right? I'm not good mathematician. Next time I will try to see Einstein somewhere around if I catch him. Right? So, but I don't want to die so soon to meet him. <laughs> I just remember he is in some high heavens, and right now I'm enjoying the earthly heavens. Right, so this thing all resolve into one, all these calculations, rather minus one. It will resolve to minus one, minus one, divided by one, it should become, and of course 60, don't forget it is there. So it will resolve into 
60 millivolt. What does this mean? That when concentration inside is 15 millimole, outside is 150 millimole, and if membrane is permeable to sodium, then what will be the equilibrium potential for sodium if sodium is allowed to move down its electrochemical gradient is 60 millivolt? What does it mean in our discussion? In our discussion means that if membrane is permeable to sodium, right, and more sodium is outside, less sodium inside, sodium will rush in. And it will keep on going in until inside become enough positive to repel the further sodium incoming, is that right, under the concentration gradient. Because concentration gradient is inward. Sodium outside is 10 times more than the inside. But it, this under the concentration gradient, it will keep on coming in until inside becomes sufficiently positive. Only this equation has helped to that sufficiently positive value should be somewhere near plus 60 millivolt. So inside has to become plus 60 millivolt only then further incoming influx of sodium will be stopped even if membrane is still permeable. Is that right? Am I clear? Actually, phenomenon like this occurs when membranes are stimulated. Because when membranes are stimulated, then what really happens? The excitable membranes of the muscles and neurons, when they are appropriately stimulated, they become permeable to sodium. sodium. So sodium rushes in. And when so, uh, sodium influx occurs, then resting membrane potential, which was previously near the potassium equilibrium potential, it starts uh, rushing towards sodium equilibrium potential which is plus 60 millivolt or plus 65 millivolt. Am I clear? But actually those voltage gated sodium channel close before it could approach reach its equilibrium potential because membrane does not remain permeable long enough to allow the sodium ions to bring the membrane to the plus 60 or 65 millivolt. Is that right? Inside. Am I clear? So here, Mustafa, I think you are new here. Yeah. I will talk to you later because it's being recorded and I don't want to record your interview right now. I charge extra for that, <laughs> right? All right, after this very simple discussion, you understand that in the Naran's equation, what is there? There is some constant with ratio of concentration of ion in and out. And as that ratio changes, of course, this other things remain constant. For a given ion, as ratio changes, equilibrium potential will change. Any question up to this? Okay. Now, one more question. Have you heard of Goldman equation? Actually, cell membrane may be under the effect of multiple ions in their movements. Look, if we make a cell here, in resting condition, of course, potassium is very important, isn't it? Potassium in and potassium out, outside it is less. But sodium can also play a role if, significant role if membrane become sufficiently permeable to sodium. Even chloride can play a role, chloride out and chloride in. Right? Now, Normally, you know that membranes are permeable to, sufficiently permeable to potassium. potassium. And that is why normally potassium keep on leaking out under resting condition and inside become minus 85 millivolt. Is that right? About sodium, we said that in resting conditions, membranes are not permeable to sodium. That is why sodium does not play any significant role uh, in determination of resting membrane potential. Let's talk about chloride. <coughs> Chloride channels are also present in the cell membranes and chloride does not play any major role. The reason being that equilibrium potential for chloride, again the same equation, Naran's equation, if you calculate for chloride and you put all those funny things, what was that, 2.3 or simply put minus 60 millivolt by Z, F and Z here, only Z and Z is one here and then chloride concentration N and out. If you calculate all these things for a real normal cell, it will turn out to be minus 85 millivolt. It means equilibrium potential for the chloride is also minus 85 millivolt. It means if membrane, cell membrane has, has reached to the potential of 
minus 85 millivolts, then chloride ions will not move in and out in spite of the fact that that membrane is permeable to chloride. Now, actually, potassium diffusion out establishes the RSU membrane potential near minus 85 millivolt, which by chance happens to be the equilibrium potential for chloride as well. So, will chloride love to move in the resting cell significantly? No. Uh, do you understand it or I should make it more clear? Not a bit, then I will properly explain. Listen. First thing we discussed in the last lecture that potassium is too much inside the cell and outside is less and membranes are permeable to potassium, so a lot of potassium diffuses out. And as it keeps on diffusing out, uh, this diffusion potential develops because when potassium diffuses out, uh, anions are not dragged with it. So anions are left behind. So they contribute to the electronegativity inside the cell membranes. Is that right? Then we talked about that potassium will keep on diffusing out until uh, it, it reaches its equilibrium potential then net movement of potassium will not be there. Usually equilibrium potential uh, for the potassium is minus 85 millivolt when there are normal potassium values inside and outside. Am I clear? So with what we have discussed right now, then in most of the normal cell, the potassium is allowed to diffuse out, but it is right, then most of the cells have resting minimum potential near minus 85 millivolt. Claro? Now. We talk about chloride. Chloride is more outside. Chloride concentration is more extracellularly and less intracellularly. If we put the chloride concentration here as well as here, right, and calculate for Nernst equation, the result will be minus 85. It means that chloride's equilibrium potential is minus 85 millivolt. What does it really mean? It means if the membrane has electrical potential of minus 85 inside the cell, the net movement of the chloride will not be there because equilibrium potential is uh, the potential difference in and out when net movement of the ion is not there in spite of the fact that membrane is permeable to that particular ion. Is that right? Now you see, resting cells are having the resting membrane potential determined by the equilibrium potential, diffusion out of the potassium. Now this resting membrane potential which is normally established in most of the cells due to diffusion out of the potassium, this resting membrane potential value is very near, almost near the same, uh, the value for the equilibrium potential for chloride. Then do you think chloride will love to move? No. So even though chloride concentration out is more and in is less, but still it will not go in. Why? Yeah, he is becoming scholar, you know, I'm impressed. He is saying that it is negative, it is anion. Chloride is anion, isn't it? And inside is already minus 85. Under the concentration gradient, let's suppose here is a confused potassium standing here. This is a confused potassium, right? Uh, so, sorry, chloride. Confused chloride. Its concentration gradient is telling that your concentration is more outside, less inside Russian. But electronegativity inside is not allowing it to come in. Is that right? Due to this reason, practically speaking, chloride ions do not play any significant role in the resting membrane potential in spite of the fact they have concentration uh, gradient differential across the membrane, in spite of the fact the membrane is permeable to them because membrane potential is already at the equilibrium potential of chloride. Am I clear? Did I say chloride or potassium? Chloride. Sure? Okay. So that is what you have to remember. Clear? Thank you. After, but again, when we talk about a membrane which may have multiple ions with differential concentrations in and out, for example, potassium and sodium and chloride, sometimes you need to calculate what will be the sum of, what will be the exact equilibrium potential or electromotive force across the membrane or what will be the volt voltage across the, across the membrane when there are multiple ions with slightly different permeabilities. It means we have to add the Nernst equation of potassium plus Nernst equation of sodium plus Nernst equation of chloride. You have to sum them up. You are understanding? When you sum all of them, what will happen? The equation will be called Goldman equation. That's so simple. You are understanding? 
What is Goldman equation? Goldman equation is a mathematical expression to somehow find that if there are multiple ions with concentration differential across the membrane with different permeabilities, all, what is the sum effect of all those ions and their movement to produce the voltage in the membrane? Is that right? No problem? Okay. Now, let's see how this uh, Goldman equation should go, right? If we talk about this Goldman equation, what it will be? That electromotive forces are equally sum of the equilibrium potentials determined by all multiple ions. What it will be? Minus 60 millivolt, you remember that value? The all constant put together, right? Plus, what you will do? All those ions, for example, start with the potassium, which is potassium concentration in divided by potassium concentration out into permeability of potassium. Right? All this should be added. Whatever the results are coming should be added to the sodium concentration. Is it difficult or it's easy, isn't it? The same thing. Nernst the equation of potassium plus sodium plus chloride if these three and sodium out. Right? Of course, you have to multiply by it by permeability. Permeability of sodium. Of course, in resting situation, uh, permeability of sodium is zero. So this part of the Goldman equation disappears. Because you must be knowing that if zero added to something, it doesn't bring any change. Sure. So permeability of sodium for sodium. Then it should be added to what? Permeability uh, values coming for chloride. And now you see, very easily we have understood, I hope, what thing? Uh, concentration of chloride in and concentration of chloride out multiplied by permeability for chloride. Right? Just you have a question. The result will be the same. I mean, uh, it is your choice that you ch in, uh, add the individual things or you want to do it as a sum. But because in the book they write Goldman equation, student think a new concept has come. But actually there's nothing new, but somehow students drive new concepts out of that. Is that right? It's just like that. If its value is suppose uh, 85 potassium, its value is zero. Why? So you do like the yeah, we, we know the concentration of individual ions and put them into equation, multiply by the, that constant value, is that right, and get the result. Is that right? But result will be the same even if you uh, determine the Nernst value for this and this and this separately and then add them together. Is that right? So what is basically Nernst equation tells you what will be the equilibrium potential across a membrane if membrane is permeable to one ion. Nernst equation is concerned with one nine. It is far away from the reality as a woman expect her husband to be loyal to one. <laughs> Men believe more in Goldman equation. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> and in the end they multiply everything with constant and that is what women never understand. <laughs> Probably they are not good mathematicians. So th that is ideal that the one membrane is permeable to one ion and you are calculating the things and then you say equilibrium will develop. Women never find that equilibrium in their husbands. Why? Because the multiple things are affecting man's life. Is that right? That is why we have to go for the Goldman equation. Right? But don't forget to give gold to your own wife. Right? Then you are free for so many things. You know, if you keep on supplying your wife with good amount of gold, or if you are clever with golden words only, she will not believe anyone. Right? So you know about the Goldman equation and Naran's equation? Right? The neuron equation is just saying that there is one, uh, what will be the equilibrium potential determined in the membrane when there is, there is one ion across the membrane which is able to move. Is that right? And other ions are hypothetically not there, but actually they are, practically they are there. So we have to think of Goldman equation. But let me tell you the real trick. You can do this thing. That in one situation you apply one Nernst potential, at other situation you apply 
No. Other Naran's situation to keep the things into balance. For example, when cell membrane is resting, Naran's equation is really applicable to potassium. For example, we apply the whole Goldman situation to potassium in resting membrane. Resting membrane is allowing only the movement of potassium. So net movement is potassium. So this result will come there. This result is not there and this result is not there in resting membrane. Am I clear? No problem. But when membrane is appropriately stimulated, suddenly it becomes permeable to sodium. sodium, especially in excitable cells. Then uh, this value will be the result and these, and these are cancelled. So basically, practically speaking, Goldman situation reduces to Naran's situation when membrane is resting, then it is like Naran's situation for potassium. Membrane loves to be near the Naran's potential of potassium. And when membrane is appropriately excited, then what happens? Membrane is dragged because now sodium is in action to, towards the Naran's situation of sodium. sodium. Is that right? You understand it, Faisal, hopefully. Right, so even Goldman equation can be resolved to single situation, but time to time it changes. That is why that when membrane is resting, resting membrane potential is approximately minus 85 because it is driven mainly by potassium. But when membrane is stimulated and become highly permeable to sodium, then it runs away from potassium equilibrium and approaches the sodium near that, right, then this component of the equation is dominating the situation. Anyone has a question about it? No. Now we come to the most important thing of all this discussion. No. We'll talk about that in clinical situations, one day all of you will be doctors, that if your patient develop hyperkalemia or hypokalemia, what happens to resting membrane potential? Or if there are uh, sodium fluctuation in the blood, what happens? or what does not happen to the resting membrane potential. Am I right? So that is what I'm going to discuss about it. Because on clinical side, there are so many situations which produce hyperkalemia, and there's so many clinical situations which produce hypokalemia, right? And that affects the resting membrane potential, and that may have very, very dangerous, you can say, implications clinically. For example, First of all, let me tell you, let's suppose here is the cell, right? And here is your circulatory system. This is the normal high potassium concentration inside the cell. And extracellular potassium concentration is low. low. Let's suppose inside it is 140 millimole and outside it is just 4 millimole, 4 millimole. And here is also 4 millimole. Listen now, one thing very carefully. Actually, potassium, potassium or sodium or calcium or chloride, they freely move between the blood and interstitial fluid. This is blood, this is interstitial fluid. Because they freely move, so whatever is the concentration of these ions in the blood, it is the same in the interstitial fluid. Now, blood plus interstitial fluid together is called extracellular fluid. Plasma plus, what is this? Interstitial fluid together are called extracellular fluid. Now, concentration of ion in the extracellular fluid can be determined by concentration of that ion from the blood sample. Because in the blood, in my blood, potassium concentration will be same what is present in my interstitial fluid. But uh, ions don't move freely. The movement of ions across the membrane is well regulated. Is that right? Now, when, let's suppose, if uh, there's normal concentration difference with normal potassium permeability, we have already inferred that what will be the resting membrane potential? Minus 85 millivolt or minus 90 millivolt. It varies a little bit from cell to cell. Some cells have resting membrane potential of minus 70. Why? Because uh, there's a slight leakage of sodium in them, right? Now, in resting conditions, now, Let's suppose this is the normal situation we have developed. Potassium here is 4 millimole, here is 4 millimole, here it is 140 millimole, and potassium diffusing out until and membranes are allowing in the resting conditions the movement of potassium. So resting membrane potential is minus 85 millivolt. Now listen. Let's suppose this is resting membrane potential. And this is how much? 
माइनस एटी फाइव मिली वोल्ट इज दैट राइट नाउ लेट सपोज हियर इज थ्रेश होल्ड पोटेंशियल आई विल एक्सप्लेन इन एक्शन पोटेंशियल दैट इन स्पेशली इन एक्साइटेबल साइल लाइक न्यूरो एंड मसल्स वन रेस्ट्रीम पोटेंशियल टच द थ्रेश होल्ड पोटेंशियल सडनली वोल्टेज गेटेड कैटाइनिक चैनल्स ओपन लाइक सोडियम चैनल्स ओपन और कैल्शियम चैनल्स ओपन लॉट ऑफ कैटाइन कम इन टू सेल आर यू अंडरस्टैंडिंग मी मात यू आर नॉट अंडरस्टैंडिंग अगेन आई विल एक्सप्लेन लुक लेट सपोज दिस इज एन एक्साइटेबल सेल एंड नॉर्मली इंडस्टिंग कंडीशन इट इज वेरी वेरी लिकी टू लिकी टू पोटाशियम इट डज हैव वोल्टेज गेटेड वट आर दीज सोडियम चैनल्स दीज आर ओके वोल्टेज गेटेड सोडियम चैनल्स बट एट माइनस एटी फाइव दीज चैनल आर क्लोज दे आर नॉट वर्किंग दे आर क्लोज इज द राइट सो एट माइनस एटी फाइव मिली वोल्ट आर एट रेस्टिंग मैन पोटेंशियल पोटाशियम लिकी चैनल आर ओपन बट एट दिस पर्टिकुलर वोल्टेज वोल्टेज गेटेड सोडियम चैनल आर क्लोज सो सोडियम वॉन्ट टू कम इन बट कैन नॉट कम इन यू अंडरस्टैंड दैट थिंग थैंक गॉड नाउ लेसन वेन द वोल्टेज गेटेड सोडियम चैनल ओपन they open let's suppose they open at minus 70 millivolt or minus 65 millivolt any okay we put it minus 70 millivolt now until resting minimum potential is minus 85 will they open no we have to take the resting minimum potential up to minus 70 only that millions of sodium channels will open and lot of sodium will come in and too much sodium will come in then internal electronegativity will be neutralized as sodium is positive charges coming in and when internal electronegativity will be neutralized we say due to influx heavy influx of sodium internal part of the membrane which was negatively polarized now it has lost its negative polarity or we say membrane is depolarized now you understand that mm -hmm. it's clear look at it here i put minus 70 millivolt let's suppose what is it this is a threshold potential what is threshold potential the potential at which fast cationic influx channels open like sodium channels open am i clear now if you want to excite the cell right if you want to stimulate the cell it means you want to depolarize the cell if you want to depolarize the cell somehow you should take the resting minimum potential up to threshold later on in the lecture of action potential i will tell you how you can take the resting minimum potential up to threshold so if you stimulate and bring some cations in so that resting minimum potential approaches threshold suddenly massive amount of sodium will come in and membrane will depolarize membrane will be excited let's suppose to we stimulate here and due to the stimulation some cations come in and take the resting minimum potential up to threshold at threshold heavy amount of sodium will come in and it become let's suppose zero it means negative polarity is lost so membrane is depolarized is that right now when you produce depolarization it means you produce stimulation am i right you excite, you excite. now listen we'll see what happens to the relationship of resting minimum potential and threshold potential with changes in the potassium concentration in the blood that is the clinical concept which we really need this is threshold potential claro now listen let's suppose what we were saying that potassium level outside is 4 is that right let's suppose due to some reason uh, let's suppose from your kidney you are giving some drugs like thiazide drugs and some special diuretics some diuretics are potassium wasting diuretic and someone is taking some drugs which are throwing the potassium into urine and if you keep on taking those drugs long enough potassium concentration will start falling when potassium concentration will start falling outside the cell then concentration gradient which derive the potassium from inside to the outside will become less or more so potassium will move from inside to out more or less so it means whenever you have hypokalemia then from the excitable cells excessive amount of potassium is diffusing out this extra amount of potassium will diffuse out make the internal side of the membrane excessively negative because if extra amount of in hypokalemia when extra amount of potassium shift out it means extra amount of anions are left behind is that right and that make the membrane very very negative so it become more polarized 
or we call it membrane has become hyperpolarized, right? So actually under those circumstances, if potassium is leaking too much, resting minimum potential which was here, that will shift here. Minus suppose 90 millivolt. Is that right? So whenever there is hypokalemia, membranes of the excitable cells become hyperpolarized. Now, when membrane resting minimum potential become more negative due to excessive escape of potassium. Now, to stimulate the cell and take the resting minimum potential to threshold is easy or difficult? Difficult. difficult. Everyone is, uh, you are like doctors, isn't it? Yes. So you know it that when uh, you take the resting minimum potential away from the threshold, for example, in hypokalemia, cells lose excessive amount of potassium to the extracellular fluid and loss of excessive potassium, diffusion of excessive amount of potassium from the cell to the outside, produces hyperpolarized membranes and when cell membranes become hyperpolarized, so resting minimum potential become more negative than normal, for example, minus 90 millivolt. When resting minimum potential moves down, is it difficult to stimulate the cell or? So electrical excitability uh, properties of the cells are altered. That produces a lot of clinical problems which we'll discuss later in clinical side. Am I clear? Right. Now we do another experiment. Someone develop hyperkalemia. Hyperkalemia mean when the end kalemia, kalemia mean potassium in the blood. It is not referring to the potassium in the cell because we take the blood sample. Hypokalemia mean the potassium is less in the blood, less than normal. Hyperkalemia mean potassium is more than normal. What is the normal value of potassium anyway in the cell? 3.5 to, not in the cell, in the blood. 3.5 to 5.5 milli equivalent of millimole per liter. This value you should know as you know the names of your very close friends because many patients in your life will die if you don't take care of their potassium levels. If potassium levels become very low, membranes become hyperpolarized, they become more electrically negative and stimulation of the membranes in nerve and muscle become difficult. Is that right? So it's a good news or bad news? Uh, all the electrical properties of our central processing unit brain will be disturbed. Is that right? And even heart also depends on electrical activity, muscles also depends on skeletal muscles, smooth muscles, so there's a lot of problem. Am I clear? Now we talk about opposite. If someone develop hyperkalemia, what could be the cause of hyperkalemia? There are so many causes, but some very simple cause. Dr. Safa is going to impress everyone. The simplest cause of hyperkalemia which should be known to everyone who is becoming a doctor. The diet or oh, Pardon? <laughs> you eat, okay, she has an idea that she, uh, we eat a lot of banana. <laughs> right, if you eat a lot of banana, even though I think this is, she is trying to prove that uh, we have something to do with evolution. <laughs> right? Uh, monkeys take a lot of bananas. Anyway, if somehow you uh, get interested in a uh, lot of bananas, Maybe you have a, a bet with someone that I can eat 100 bananas, right? But usually if you take two or three bananas, what happens? More potassium go into the GIT, but potassium level in the blood does not go up if you are a normal person, biologically speaking. Why? Because when there's more potassium in GIT, GIT do absor does absorb more potassium, but potassium level in the blood is regulated at kidney level. Kidney is so master regulator of potassium, you put more potassium in the blood, it will exert it. It will increase its loss of potassium into urine in physi within physiological limits. If you slightly increase input of potassium in the blood, kidney will expel out the potassium. If you slightly decrease potassium supply to the blood, kidney will retain potassium. So potassium, kidneys play a very major role in regulation of potassium. potassium. So we say potassium is normally not regulated at entry point. Of course, GIT is the entry point for potassium. It is regulated at exit point. I mean through the kidney system. But there are some situations in which massive amount of potassium come into blood and kidney is doing its best but still for a while potassium level in the blood may go high. Can you tell me some conditions? Yeah, it's very easy to understand. Cells are the bags of potassium. If massive amount of cells rupture in your body, where the potassium will go? Into blood. That is what every doctor should know. A massive set tissue damage. Okay. Cells are the bags of potassium. So whenever there's massive tissue damage, you get burns or you get crush injuries, 
right? It's so easy to understand. The bags of potassium will rupture and massive amount of potassium will come into blood and you will develop hyperkalemia. If you have functioning kidney, they will try to get rid of potassium. But when there is so much crush injuries, even many other substances which are toxic to the kidney disturb the kidney function also. Am I clear? Mm -hmm. So next time in your life, whenever you see a patient with massive tissue damage, you must think that there is a risk of hyperkalemia. And no need to remember it's so simple. That bags are, cells are the bags of potassium. And massive tissue damage, what is happening? Cells are rupturing. So if a patient comes with massive burns, there's a risk of hyperkalemia, apart with other problems. If a patient comes with crush injury, right, and still alive, there's a risk of hyperkalemia. You have done very extensive surgery, and surgery in a very ruthless way. Maybe you damage many tissues, then again, hyperkalemia. Yes, please. Even if you have septicemia and heavy infections in the body, which are damaging many tissues, you have a risk of Hyperkalemia. This does not need to be memorized. If someone asks a doctor why a patient may develop hyperkalemia, one of the simplest causes, massive tissue damage. Other simplest cause must be exit gate is not working. Renal failure. You know the most dangerous point, it is a little bit clinical, so I'll concentrate on Dr. Safa. If someone has sudden renal failure, we call it acute renal failure, kidney failed to perform its function, Acutely, there is progressively rising urea level, the progressively rising creatinine level, and the progressively rising potassium level in the blood, which is the most dangerous. You should never think it's potassium. Urea and creatine are just uh, markers of kidney dysfunction, right? But what really kills the patient if you don't? Potassium. When you will become doctor and if you become a very good doctor, which I'm expecting from her, she's a very hard-working student, she will be knowing if someone comes with acute renal failure, she is not worried to bring the urea and creatinine down. They, don't, they are not as toxic. She will immediately take a sample and think about what is the report of potassium. Is that right? Anyway, so what I was talking about that either hyperkalemia occurred due to renal shutdown or hyperkalemia occurred because your tissues are massively injured and potassium level in the blood is going up. How will it really disturb patient, remember? In hypokalemia we have talked about that excessive potassium come out and cell membranes become too, too negative, hyperpolarized. Uh, your kidneys, uh, where you give some uh, Cause of hypokalemia is such diuretic drug which are potassium wasting diuretic drugs. You will learn in next semester. Are there other examples? Of there are so many examples I will not mention right now. Okay. Right? So, we'll have lectures on fluid electrolyte balance or imbalance. But right now I just want to concentrate how fluctuation in the potassium in the blood alter the resting potential and what could be the deleterious consequences for that. We have already learned that when hypokalemia is there, more potassium comes out, member cell membrane becomes excessively negative, hyperpolarized, and it is more far away from the threshold, and it is difficult to excite the uh, neurons and muscle cell. Of course, that is not a good news for our biological system. Now we should concentrate that once there is hyperkalemia, either by massive tissue damage or by the sudden renal shutdown, if potassium level is high, what will happen to resting membrane potential? Of course, if potassium level becomes high, outside the cell, then do you think potassium can easily, uh, it will normally come out or it will diffuse out less? Yes. Diffuse out less, gradient will reduce. When it will diffuse out less, then it will be more potassium retained in the cell, so it will be more negative or less negative? Less negative. So resting minor potential in hyperkalemia will move to the side. It will moved up. When potassium goes down, resting minimum potential becomes more negative. When potassium in the blood goes up, resting minimum potential becomes less negative. Is that right? Am I clear? One of the simplest way to remember is write down potassium on the bar of resting minimum potential. What does this potassium is telling you? That potassium diffusion out of the cell is mainly responsible for resting minimum potential. Then potassium is going down, then resting minimum potential will go down in the blood. If potassium level in the blood is going up, resting minimum potential will go up. Is it difficult to understand these things? They are too easy, I think dangerously easy. Now, question is, yeah, I mean some things are so easy that students start catching their doctors, professors. Now listen. Now what I'm talking about, that 
patient has hyperkalemia, potassium level has gone up. When potassium level in the blood is high, it means potassium is high in the interstitial fluid, extracellular fluid, so potassium finds it difficult to diffuse out enough. So residual potential will become less negative. So membrane is hypopolarized. When the residual potential becomes more negative, membrane is hyperpolarized. And when residual potential is less negative, we say it is less polarized or hypopolarized or it is slightly depolarized. Simply, it is slightly, slightly depolarized, not fully depolarized. Anyway, what will happen? Membrane will become now more excitable or less excitable? Yes, who will tell me? If resting membrane potential is not 85, due to hyperkalemia, resting membrane potential is all the time, suppose 67. Membranes will become more excitable or less excitable? You are wrong. <laughs> Look, if, if medical science was so easy and human designing is by God, you know, the master engineer of everything. Intuitively, you think it should become more excitable because you are thinking, no, let's, let me tell you what you are thinking and then let me tell you why you are wrong. Uh, first of all, you are thinking that when potassium is more outside, then less potassium is coming in, right? So, residual membrane potential is moving towards threshold. So, actually, now, uh, you can very easily stimulate the residual potential with little stimulation to threshold and action potential should start. This is what you are thinking. Is that right? Now let me tell you what really happens. Actually, the trick is that, that you should have very clear concept that excitable, you know, sodium channels have activation gate as well as, this is activation gate and they have inactivation gate. You know that? In last lecture I mentioned a little bit about that. They have activation gate and they have inactivation gate. When resting membrane potential is at no, near normal values, then activation gates are closed and activation gates are open. When, when you take resting membrane potential acutely, rapidly from resting value to threshold, then what happens that activation gate will open. Let me tell you about this little bit molecular thing which is clinically very, very important. These are the channels in three form. First of all, if you take resting membrane potential rapidly to the threshold, then what really happens, activation gates suddenly open. They are, they are more fast to open. When they open at the same time, what happens? Almost at the same time, inactivation gates start closing. But these are more fast in action and their action is a little bit delayed. So during that fraction of the millisecond, when activation gate is open, open but inactivation gate is yet not closed, lot of sodium will come in and membrane will depolarize, right? And then you also know that once depolarization is done, activation gate will be open, but inactivation is closed. Is that right? Once in sodium channel, inactivation gate is closed, can you bring sodium in? No. no. Is that right? Now, when this inactivation gate will again open, and this will go back to this situation, which is excitable channels. When membrane will go back to its normal resting membrane potential, then it will again close and this will open. This is what normally happens, which every student should know. I'll tell you which every student should know also is that if you take the resting membrane potential rapidly to the threshold, then, then activation gate open, and inactivation gate are closing, but depolarization occur. Is that right? But if you keep, if you keep resting minimum potential very near to the threshold all the time, you know what you are doing? Wrongly giving a wrong message to these channels. These channels are supposed to work for a brisk millionth of a second and then shut down. As if you are having a servant and very efficient servant and whenever you really want to stimulate, you give him a message, do this. He briskly goes and does work. But if you all the time keep on saying, do it, do it, do it, do it, what he will do? He will become resistant. You don't have this experience. If someone is very good to you and working according to your orders, but if you over demand, what happens? The person becomes least bothered about your commands and demands. Have you seen this in life? It happens about channels also. If you keep, keep the resting membrane potential, Chronically near the threshold. threshold, sodium channels become angry. They say, what are you doing? I want proper stimulation, fast stimulation from here to here. So 
So what really happens when you're keeping residuum potential most of the time very near to the threshold, sodium channels permanently close their inactivation gate. Now what happens, activation gate is already closed and inactivation is also closed. So what, when channel go to this pathological situation, when residuum minimum potential is chronically kept very near to threshold, is that right? Then inactivation gate become chronically closed. Now even you reach to the threshold, even if activation gate open up, can depolarization occur? No, that is exactly what happens to the voltage gated sodium channels. That when patient has hyperkalemia, when patient has hyperkalemia, then potassium cannot diffuse out enough, retain potassium, take the residuum potential chronically very near to threshold and in excitable tissues like heart and the, and the central nervous system and other and neurons, uh, they are most of the sodium channels may be trapped into closed state of inactivation gates. Is that right? Then whatever you do stimulation, uh, membrane is hyperstimulatable or hypostimulatable? Can you stimulate easily or difficult to stimulate? You are not understanding me. No. Yeah, let me explain it to her. What is happening there? That means potassium level here is high. Potassium is escaping less. So, resting minimum potential is chronically high. It means resting minimum potential is no more minus 85. It is less for minus 65. When resting minimum potential is chronically here, maybe sodium channels fire for a while after that then uh, trap into inactive state. Mm -hmm. And when they are in uh, trap into inactive state, can they go back to normal state? Mm -hmm. To return to the normal state, right, we have to have minus 85 millivolt. Is that right? So what really happens when in excitable cells, resting minimum potential become very near to threshold potential, most of the sodium channels become dysfunctional. Right, because their inactivation gates are chronically closed. Is that right? Then whatever stimulation you do, appropriate or inappropriate stimulation, uh, sodium channels are not going to open up, you are not, not going to depolarizations, you are not going to get depolarizations, so membranes become more excitable or less excitable? Less excitable. So that will increase muscle, uh, muscle function, cardiac function and neuronal function or decrease the function? Decrease. What I really wanted to tell you, that in severe hypokalemia, electrical properties of heart and neurons are disrupted. Whenever potassium is very low, it is difficult to excite excitable cells. And whenever potassium is very high, still it becomes difficult to excite the excitable cells. But mechanisms are different. That when potassium is very low, Right, then it is difficult to excite the excitable cells because the resting potential is far away from the threshold and it takes extra effort, extra stimulation to take the hyperpolarized cell membrane from hyperpolarized voltage to the threshold. This is the problem in hypokalemia. What is the problem in hyperkalemia? In hyperkalemia what happens that there is more potassium outside less potassium coming out, resting minimum potential become chronically near to threshold and most of the sodium channels will be trapped into inactive state and again membrane become more difficult to excite and again neuromuscular functions and cardiac functions and central nervous system functions are disrupted. Is that right? What does all this mean? That your patient can die due to cardiac arrhythmia because patient has severe hypokalemia and another patient can die with cardiac arrhythmias because he has severe hyperkalemia. It means hypokalemia kill the person, severe hypokalemia can kill the person and severe hyperkalemia can also kill a person. I think this is one of the best examples, moderation is good in life and in everything. Is that right? That is why I say my students should know the potassium levels normal are 3.5 to 5.5 millivolts. When they start going down than this, you should become concerned, and very concerned. And if they start going up, again you should be very much concerned. Am I clear? Now one more question. These were the fluctuations of potassium in the blood which can uh, produce disturb uh, disturbances in resting minimum potential and that eventually disturb the excitability of the excitable Cells. Is that right? Now we talk about sodium. If someone has hypernatremia or hyponatremia, 
नेट्रियम मीन सोडियम डोंट टेल हाइपर सोडियमिया एंड हाइपो सोडियमिया देर इज नो टर्म लाइक दिस राइट सो देर इज हाइपर नेट्रीमिया एंड हाइपर नेट्रीमिया वट विल हैपन टू रेस्ट्यूम एंड पोटेंशियल इन हाइपर नेट्रीमिया सोडियम लेवल इज हायर देन नॉर्मल इन द ब्लड आई एम अबाउट टू बी इम्प्रेस बाय सम वन यस If you are severe hypernatremia, what will happen to resting membrane potential of the resting cells? Prolonged. Yeah. Prolonged. What will be prolonged? Cell will be prolonged. You are, uh, no. You are. Oh my God, you are talking about the algebraic sum of ECG. That is a different concept. Right now we are talking about if you have hypernatremia. Uh, honestly, you said QRS complex and QT interval will be prolonged. That is a clinical finding in hypocalcemia, which we are not discussing now. Yes. So the sodium concentration is higher outside the cell. Then when the gauge for sodium opens, more sodium ions. So you feel there will be more depolarizations. Yeah, maybe my overshoot. Okay, someone uh, there's a young man here who is saying that if the sodium more outside, then when membranes are depolarized, when membranes are depolarized, he thinks that more sodium will go into the cell. Yes, maybe, but it, it, one section potential is there. It is there. A little larger or smaller doesn't matter. And later on, we'll discuss in action potential that usually in a given cell the stereotype. So this is not the right answer because I was talking about resting membrane potential. What will be the changes of rest in the resting membrane potential of excitable cell if sodium level go little up or little down? Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Why do you think that there is nothing happening there? Well, if it, if it is a slight change in sodium concentration, slight. Okay, significant change. Nothing. If there is significant sodium, normal value of sodium should be known 145 milli equivalent per liter to 135 milli mole or milli equivalent per liter. This is the normal value of sodium, right? For example, it goes 155, or it goes to 130. Hypernatremia, hyponatremia, or 125. What will happen to excitability of the cells? How? Look, don't answer me anything. Nothing happens. Whatever you say that it, excitability will increase or decrease, you will be any way wrong. You know why? You know why? No, no, no. You know why? Because resting membrane potential does not depend on sodium. Resting when cells cells are resting, uh, they are not permeable to sodium. So sodium goes up or down. It doesn't matter to the resting membrane potential. That's so simple. You know, resting when cells are resting, membranes are not permeable to sodium. Are they permeable to sodium? So, for the resting membrane potential, sodium diffusion is not I drive uh, influencing the resting membrane potential normally. Is that true or not? Are you understanding? So, sodium is norm uh, is normally physiologically does not influencing the resting membrane potential of the excitable cells because excitable cells resting membranes are not permeable to sodium, sodium when those membranes are resting. So you increase the sodium, or you decrease the sodium, it is the least bothered. That is why I say to my students, please be more worried about potassium channels, potassium levels in the blood than to the. And I don't know what's the reason. All over the world, somehow medical students are more interested to remember the values of the sodium and less interested to remember the values of potassium. But what really kills your patient is severe potassium fluctuations, not severe sodium fluctuations. Is that clear?